Caddis Maximus here. This is a teardown of a Vita Root hub odometer. There's a few different brands of these things out there. The Vita Roots, a lot of them are like this flat face. There's some that actually have like a kind of a cone shaped face. These are primarily seen on class eight truck, semi truck trailers. So you can, owners and companies can monitor how many miles are on a trailer. But things like city buses and stuff also use them for auditing purposes. These things are only like 50 bucks, and they're one of the definitions of a reliable, complex me uh, mechanical device. People talk about hand tools like ratchets, you know, snap-on ratchets to Milwaukee old Milwaukee quarter drills. Oh, that really holds a candle. This particular unit, it's in miles, 500 revolutions a mile. And it's not decimals, so this is known as a 10 million count. And this particular unit has 1,285,790 miles, so 1.3 million miles. And this is mounted right, on, you know, there's a, a little threaded portion. This mounts right onto the axle. Some axles actually have threads specifically for easily mounting these. Sometimes there's these kind of brackets that you can get to mount these things. But this is not cushioned by any type of suspension. Semi-truck tires can be 100 PSI and they're bias ply. Those things are rock hard to support the loads. And so every single pothole and bump, think about the shock loads of hitting a pothole at highway speeds on a semi-truck tire when this is just mounted inside the wheel. This thing is just getting punished and pounded so hard that it's actually surprising that this fitting, because this thing actually weighs a good couple of pounds, really surprised that this fitting actually takes the force. And I'm sure there are probably issues with some of these hitting just massive potholes and actually breaking off. But nonetheless, that is 1.3 million miles of just being hammered. And the thing runs just as smooth as probably the day it was installed. So this thing takes a massive amount of road grit, wild temperature spring, uh, swings, and just continuous massive shock loads and still continues to perform. So it's a one-piece sealed unit. Once they get up to being too high of a mileage, you just replace them. Once again, these things are like 50 bucks. So it's like a die cast aluminum case with like a the front face appears to be swaged and probably press fit into that. We have like some silicone and this is like a hollow fitting and like a little ball bearing there. So that may be where they use like a vacuum pump. Just it may not be totally under vacuum, but to remove humidity and that type of stuff. And I just wanted to pull it apart, really to look at the bearing that it's riding on and see what it looks like after all this punishment. For this kind of system, usually it's actually pretty easy to get them open in a certain applying force in the right way, such as hammering along the seal. This is, a once again, a destructive test. And a variety of hammers, you can use fullers. I'm actually going to use a mason's hammer. These are kind of hard to find, but they're super cool because they have these giant carbide faces. And they're made for chipping and smoothing the edges of brick and cinder block. Also, when you are scoring them to break them off, you use these hammers to break them off. You flip the head around this way if you're left or right-handed. But super cool, kind of specialty. But they do have that big carbide face. Well, I was hoping it might pop off a little easier. It's going to take some work, but these are designed to really take uh, hammering for a very long time. Literally two hammer blows after I paused the video, it popped the front face out. So let's take a look at this. First thing, there's this whole stack of thrust washers here. There's a, That's actually a little O-ring to act as a cushion when the face of this is gets jammed outwards. This lens does indeed have an o-ring. That o-ring is pushed down and actually seals against this larger lip and then there's this really thin area that they just basically crimp 
over the edge of the curvature of the lens and that's how they get it to seal so o-ringed and crimped just seeing at the top there's a patent number 3198430 you can see where this lens was hitting the outer lens and there's the rest of it Oddly enough, that's some area in there that's slightly offset. There's some more wa thrust washers on the bottom side here. And an interesting like steel insert, I guess, to help support this axle. How interesting. So that explains why it's off center. This isn't this has gears internally to change the numbers. But to actually activate it, I would have assumed that they would have had like little teeth on this axle. Instead, they don't. There's this little plastic bit that is off center. So this is weighted. So as this turns around, what it's doing is it's just rocking like a little timer thing here back and forth. And ratchets that up. And so as that moves up and down, it just ratchets. And... Uh, Pretty simple and I guess elegant design. It is mechanical, so the 500 revolutions a mile, we have a 500 written right on the side. All the weight is, of course, this counterweight to make sure this stays down. And it looks like, I don't think those are, and interestingly enough, those are actually little needle bearings. Those are not sleeve bearings. I kind of would have thought they might have used sleeve bearings um, since they'll never uh, be able to re-lube them. And because of the impact loads, the sleeve bearing it actually worked pretty well because of the high surface area. But instead, no, it's using double tiny little needle bearings. All right, I'm going to try peeling the face off here. I wonder if this lens pops out easily. Probably not. This face is actually a reasonably thick piece of aluminum that they have riveted on here. So we'll have to pop that off. Be as gently as you can. The only way to properly remove this faceplate would be to take a Dremel and grind down the end of those little rivets. There's our faceplate. And then there's our entire mechanism. The only other thing to figure out is what the heck is in here? Why on earth is there a something rattling in that little ratchet this is the ratchet wheel it's keyed in the little worm gear which disengages that side gear little standoff fingers stay in the middle and so when it rotates it just catches it one number at a time and in that top area there are these two like 3 8 inch steel bearing balls and just like a little plastic place from the bounce around and there must be something to the dynamics of the two ball bearings that help prevent this from maybe accidentally spinning over or somehow getting caught up and um, I mean that's the best I can figure it I wouldn't un don't exactly understand why you would have two extra ball bearings in there but once again something about the dynamics anyway that's what's inside a Lisa Vita root, which is like a institution for these things. What's inside one of those hub meters? It's real basic, just a big metal body that rides on a couple bearings and turns up a ticker to count the miles away. The only real interesting thing is they have random ball bearings in them, and they're not random, but that's why they rattle. Anyway, thanks for watching.